Oh my god. Mr. Sullivan? Mr. Sullivan? It's Dr. Cohen. Can you hear me? You were in an accident, Mr. Sullivan. Near your house in Dallas, do you remember? The accident happened about a year ago. Do you remember being in a wheelchair? The reason that you're here, Mr. Sullivan, well, it's quite extraordinary. In fact, it's nothing short of a miracle. The tumor inside your spinal cord is gone. It slowly disappeared while you were in a coma. Now it is too early to tell, but all the tests that we have run show you should have the full use of your legs. Tell me something. Can you feel this? Yeah. That's good. That's real good. Now, you won't be able to move your legs for a while, because the muscles are weak, it'll take some time to adjust to that. But if all goes well, after about six months of rehab, there's a good chance you'll be able to walk again. Like I said, nothing short of a miracle. Here you're a runner. Excuse me. I Googled you. Third place, Boston Marathon. It's quite impressive. Used to be a marathoner myself back in my younger days. Well, I have got some phone calls to make. We got lots of work to do if we're gonna get you back on your feet. In the meantime, if you need anything, you just press that button to call the nurse, okay? Okay. It wasn't an accident. Excuse me? I didn't get into an accident. I know, Mr. Sullivan. Your father told me about the note that you left. I have worked for 20 years in this hospital. It has one of the best spinal cord centers in the world. I've seen thousands of patients come and go and I have no idea how your spine healed on its own, but I do know this. You've been given a second chance, my friend. I hope you take advantage of it. And nothing, absolutely nothing in this world is unforgivable. If you're gonna move on sooner or later, you have to forgive yourself. It's good. Anybody else? Karen, you've been quiet all night. Do you have anything you want to share with us? It's okay. Relax. Nobody's here to judge you. You know what, it's okay. You, you don't have to say anything. It's your first night here. No, I, I want to say something. This is all just a guess, isn't it? I mean, what makes us tick and, and why we have issues? It's just a guess. And then we, we, we twist it and we turn it until we fit it into something that makes us feel better about ourselves. I mean, what is so real about that? Nothing that I say in here is <laughs> gonna make any damn bit of difference. 
I'm not going to feel better about myself. I know you. We were in group together last month, right? River Oaks? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you since. It um, wasn't me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Karen. Karen, I'm Travis. <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, enjoy your day. Twice in one week. There must be something special about this park. I um, come here to figure things out. Well, at least you moved out of the van. <laughs> the view's much better here. I live a couple of blocks away. I, I saw your van as I was driving by. I hope you don't mind. No, no, not at all. You should come back to the group whenever you're ready. Well, see you around. Do you uh, buy into all that? That all things can be forgiven? I don't know. Um, I have a different concept of forgiveness. For me, I guess it just comes down to how much guilt you can live with. Still make it through the day. Stop fooling around in there. Mrs. Sumner will be here any minute. I'm not fooling around. I'm getting my video game. Who are you going out with? A guy. What guy? He's a friend. Am I going to meet him? Have you ever heard the saying, patience is a virtue? No. Of course not. It's not a video game. Michael, she's here. Pick up the pace, please. You're early. I'm sorry, I, I thought you said seven. Mom, I can't find my red bag. Uh, it's on the kitchen table, sweetheart. I already packed your things. Um, please, come in. Travis, this is my son, Michael. Michael, this is Travis. This 
must be a really good place to figure things out. Do you mind? I was driving by again. Thought I'd say hi. Okay, not really. Um, I haven't heard from you in a while, and I figured you might be here. I didn't realize our date went that bad. It was, uh... awkward. Didn't have anything to do with me meeting your son. I don't know, you tell me. I guess my reaction could have been better. Um, I was just caught a little bit off guard. When I saw your reaction, I sort of uh, shut down. I'm very protective of my son. I feel responsible. You blame yourself? Look, I was serious about what I said. There's strength in numbers. Whatever you have to tell me, I'm pretty sure I'll understand. I have my own secrets too. Odds or evens. If we're gonna share secrets, then it's the only fair way to decide who goes first. Odds or evens. Odds. I guess I'm up. My husband left me because my son can't walk. And it's my fault. That's why I come here. This is the last place he walked. Happened just a few blocks away, about two years ago. I was picking him up. And I was running late. Hey, Lisa! Hey, Karen! Hurry up, Michael, we're late! Is your seatbelt on? Okay. Stop fiddling around and put your seatbelt on. It won't go in. Well, it's upside down. Flip it over. Can you help me? Not now. I'll put it on at the next light. It won't go in. I said I'll put it on when we stop. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, I couldn't have been going more than 30, but... Uh, the damn airbag still went off. And Michael lunged forward and the, the bag snapped his spine. And if I had just stopped for two seconds and put his seatbelt on, it never would have happened. I don't, I don't know what happened to the man in the wheelchair. I never saw him. Last I heard, he was on life support. And I couldn't even bring myself to go see him. Can you believe that?
<laughs> what kind of person am I? My son can't walk because I hit a man in a wheelchair. <laughs> How ironic is that? And now I have to live with that for the rest of my life. You know, if forgiving yourself really is about how much guilt you can live with. I'd like to meet the person who is living with more guilt than me. Okay.